welcome to the Dental Eighteen Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent and Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental Eighteen Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. All right, Dental team, I'm super excited because today Dr. Mark Costas is joining me from the beautiful beaches of Cabo. How are you today, Mark? Hey, Kara. How are you? How about this for technology? I'm literally uh, about to take my morning run on the beach. And uh, and instead, <laughs> or before, I thought I, would, uh, I thought I would give you a call. And uh, it's, it's actually working. I might sound fuzzy. Do I sound like I'm on the move? You do sound a little bit like you're on the move, but... Obviously, if you, you're like jello to a tree. So if I can snag you during this time, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. We'll keep it a short and tactical episode. Yep. Um, you guys, you can probably hear the, the waves crashing in the background, but yeah, one of my favorite places in the world is Cabo San Lucas. It's like, it's like an hour and 40 minute flight from Phoenix. So it's like you can, you can get on a plane for less than two hours. And to me, it feels like a totally different world. People are sweet here and um, we have like our favorite places and yeah, I love it. It's it's like, uh, it's like a serious getaway for me. Oh, I love that so much. And I'm so happy you're there because you travel so much, but I don't feel like you travel necessarily for yourself all the time. And so the fact that you're with your family, you're in a beautiful place, you get to have some of that R&R time to just, you know, find, find those magical new business ideas while you've got actual space to, to think. I'm really happy that you're there. Oh, thank you. You know, isn't that so true? Like you and I are like such maniacs for travel and we're busy pretty much. Our minds are busy like 22 hours a day. Right. <laughs> and uh, and when, when you make yourself go away um, and just like you said, that quiet time opens up that creativity a little bit. And that's when all the good stuff happens because we get us type A personalities get addicted to the busyness and we don't feel like we're being productive unless we are doing something task oriented all day, every day. And we can get away from the task just for a second. It opens up that, that creativity and that's when all the magic happens. So So, uh, like running, running on the beach for me is like, it's, uh, it's like a cleansing and it's just, uh, it's, it's really good for my soul, but also for my creativity. I love that because I think, like you said, we do get addicted to the day in the day out, the busyness, the, the hustle and the bustle. And I, I'm equally with you. Like when I get on a plane and I'm exhausted and I want to take a nap instead of listening to your podcast, my podcast, answering the hundreds of emails that are in there, I have this like little bit of guilt inside of me that I feel like if I'm not being productive 100% of the time, I'm failing at life. And the other day I remember looking at Jason and I said, I just don't want to be productive anymore. Like, can I just not be productive? Because it was like on high gear all the time. So I'm glad that you're there getting a little bit of that reset. And remember what they say. They say that, um, you know, some of the best minds in the world say that busyness is a form of procrastination, right? Because the hard stuff is sitting down and with your detox and, and really thinking about the big picture. And when we get really super task oriented and busy, uh, it's like, it's like, you know, the dorm room was always the cleanest during finals. I love that. <laughs> everybody wanted to stay busy, right? Everybody right. wanted to stay busy and do a task rather than the hard stuff, like sitting down and memorizing the freaking periodic table or whatever <laughs> else it was. You know, that's the hard stuff. The easy stuff is cleaning the apartment and doing the laundry and, you know, making sure that everything is sick and span. That's procrastination, even though you, it makes you feel a little bit better, better just because you're busy. Oh, seriously. I mean, I know my procrastination is when I answer my emails because I feel like, well, if I just get my emails done, at least I'm being productive. But it's like, 
the reality is I've got 25 tasks sitting over to the right of my inbox that I know need to get done that are way more important than these emails. But the emails make me feel good because I can just check them off and say I've got a, you know, my inbox is totally empty. So that's definitely my procrastination. So if I ever tell you I'm doing emails, you know, I'm procrastinating some project like there's something I don't want to do. There's, there's something else you should be doing, like writing, <laughs> writing curriculum or something. Right? Oh, don't even talk about the writing curriculum. That is the bane of my existence when I have to sit down, which today I'm doing the billing curriculum, believe it or not. So, you know, you can tell I, I've got it in the calendar and I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll conveniently need to go to the store or something during that time because oh, it is. But Yeah, or call Mark. Or call Mark <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark, do you want a podcast? I'd, I'd much rather podcast. <laughs> It's way more fun. <laughs> Let me delay this a little longer. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I think sure. that's a good segue so. to real life. I mean, Mark, think about when you're at work, how often as a dentist or a team member, do we procrastinate those bigger projects or procrastinate those conversations with a team member by busying and filling our lives with the non-essential pieces? And I hear all the time team members feel like they're stressed out and there's not enough time in the day. But I think if we could take a hard look at ourselves... And, and create some of that white space in our world, we'd see how we're busying and flooding our lives with all this busy work that's really not essential. Yes, we're we're staying busy and productive on the clock per se, but but are you actually are you actually being proactive with your time? And are you a master of your time or is your time a master of you? And that was something I wasn't planning to talk about, but I think it'd be fun with a tactical today to to talk about that because I see it all the time in offices and I'm sure you have too. Yeah, totally, totally. That to me, it, it really comes down to having effective meetings. And you and I talk about this all the time. I hope I, I'm, I'm beating this drum, but also not beating a dead horse. Uh, it's so important to have like effective team meetings from the morning huddle to the weekly meetings with the office manager and the CEO to the weekly growth meetings and to have agenda meetings so that you can write down uh, exactly what the urgent is. Um, mm-hmm versus the important. You know, they talk about the urgent versus the important. The 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 urgent is Mrs. Jones has post up sensitivity or a dry socket. Uh the urgent is the lab case is late and the patient wasn't uh wasn't alerted and they're they're on the schedule for today. Uh the urgent is uh, a vendor didn't get paid um and you know you're you're not getting the supplies that you need. That is the urgent stuff that we deal with every single day. The important stuff is the stuff like systemization and making sure we have the office uh, operations manual done and uh, making sure that um, making sure that we're hitting our, our monthly production goal. Those are the important things. So you have to constantly be battling the urgent versus the important in your practice life, making sure that the urgent doesn't take over. And that's that, that whole thing where that we see all the time, Kira, like, we are just too darn busy to put our operations manual together. All We're just the too time. busy to effectively onboard this, this new employee when you know that that's really the important stuff. That's the stuff that's actually going to move the needle in your practice. That's the stuff that's going to give you 25, 30, 40% growth and, and allow you to um, take more time off. 100%. So if you can't prioritize. So if we can't prioritize the important over the urgent, then then we're never actually going to make lasting change for our, our organizations and in our lives. Exactly. And I think it's that like the urgent things are kind of like me answering emails in my business. You know, it's those things are quote yeah. unquote urgent. I need to get back to all these people, but I know that those can flutter and like fill my life with like I'll, I'll busy my life with phone calls and emails that are urgent. Those are urgent things, but they're not the most important things. And I watch so often. I love that you, you phrase that so perfectly of urgent versus important. And I would challenge each team member out there to look to see what urgent things you're attacking versus and putting off the important things. Because when I walk into an office, they'll tell me, just like you said, Mark, no, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to make an operations manual. I don't have time to review my AR. I don't have time to send out claims. I don't have time to follow up on these accounts because I'm just so busy answering the phone and scheduling patients. The bottom line is you've got to master your time. You have to be a master of that time and prioritize what's important because I tell everybody, I'm like, if you didn't 
Like if you took one hour per day and you walked away from the front, you had somebody else covering it for you and you actually like knocked out all those claims, just one hour a day, is the building going to burn down? Are the patients not going to receive great care? Like, is that actually something that would happen? And most people say, no, no, it's not. Like it would be just fine, but it's, it's hard. It's that uncomfortable. Like I don't really, I think more than anything, it's, it's questioning and asking yourself like, are you actually so busy that you don't have time? Or is it truly, like you said, Mark, we're procrastinating the important things that need to be done. We just don't necessarily want to do them. Yeah, I love that. So let's make it tactical really quick then, Tara, because I, I love the concept. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things like you you need to work out because that's going to increase your, your energy level. It's going to decrease your stress and you're going to live longer. So where do you start? Right. So. Let, let's let's try to come up with some tactical tips on how we prioritize the important, and and we don't get sucked into that whirlwind, that 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 vortex of busyness every single day. We actually prioritize uh, the, the important stuff that we know has to get done. So, what are some tips? So, the great question. Um, I'll give two ideas that I've come up with for other people. And then Mark, I'd love your insights as well. Um, For one, I say you probably know right now listening to this, what the three biggest projects are that you need to get done because you've put them off for months. So like look to see which email you've sent back to yourself a hundred times. Look to see what has been on your to-do list for the last three months. That's probably where you should start. It could be an operations manual. I mean, I know I could literally sit here and tell you, Mark, I need to get the billing curriculum done. I need to get my videos done for the month. And I need to finish up the projects you and I have started on and get those contracts over to you. Like those three things have been on my mind for the last several months. And they just keep, it's like running in the back of my mind. It's like that hard drive that never stops running. And it's actually taking mental space because I, I'm trying not to forget, but putting it off because I don't want to do those things. Um, so I think for team right. members, figure out what you, you probably already know. And then when you know what it is, I go through my calendar and I look. And I feel like, Mark, you and I run real busy lives and I'm not trying to like be pompous or, but the reality is you and I, I mean, I'm on a plane almost three to four times a week. I'm in offices usually five to six days a week. I run a real busy life and you do too. And so when I look, sometimes I even say there's no space in my schedule. And I've found that if I'll map out everything that's already in there, there are little snippets of time. If I'm really a master of my time, I can find time for these bigger projects to actually get them done. And I would say, prioritize that project, find the spot because there's always space in every single schedule. I don't care how busy you are. There's always space in that schedule where you can get this done. And I need you to block it in that schedule and commit to yourself with integrity that you will actually own your word and you will get it done. You're not going to let the busyness of the day in because that will always happen. That's where you get to become a master of yourself of keeping those commitments to yourself. I said, I'm going to get the billing curriculum done today. I need to own my word and get it done today. I think that's a very tactical, practical tip you can do of honoring your and and being proactive with your time and, and scheduling that way. So that's one idea that I found that works really well for offices. Yeah. And sometimes it's not fun, right? I mean, you sit down and you're like, that that little that little beeping cursor in Microsoft Word is just like screaming at you, like, "Hey, I'm here. Right. Write something. Yep. Write something. <laughs> Get it done." And you're like, "Ah, I don't want to. Oh, leave me alone, <laughs> little. <laughs> leave me alone, you beeping cursor." <laughs> uh, so here here's something here's something that we have used uh, at Dental Success Institute as we grow and our complexity increases. You know, every single day, every single week, every single year. So there are many things that I call open loops. These are projects that are half done, three quarters done, 25% done. Um, and they just haunt you, right? You're like, Oh God, you're in the middle of the night, Jerry. You're like, you sit up and you're like, Oh my God, I totally forgot yep. <laughs> about this thing that's 33% done. I need to somehow finish this or get to 50% done. I need to move that ball forward somehow. So we have found uh, that, you know, project management software helps a lot. And these apps are free. You can get you can get any number of apps. The one that we use right now for what I call open loops is uh, called Basecamp. Mm-hmm. So Basecamp, basically, all of my team has access to these uh, to this project management software. And whenever somebody moves the ball forward in any particular open loop or project that's half done or three quarters done, uh, I get an alert. And then 
back and forth, we're able to manage these projects. So we have, say, nine open loops right now. We have a curriculum that needs to be written. I need to finish my presentation for the Dental Success Summit coming up. Um, we have uh, uh, the launch of Dental Success University coming up. So all of these open loops, all these open projects have a space in base camp. And we can go to each of those open loops at any time and find out who is responsible for what and how far along they are with their actual responsibility so that we can keep track of who's holding up the project, what the bottlenecks are, and what I personally have to get done next. So base camp helps a lot. And just being able to picture, you know, these open loops is very, very helpful. Just being able to see what you have half done is very, very liberating because although it's bad news sometimes that you have nine or 12 or 15 open loops, at least it's written down somewhere and you can track exactly where you are and what needs to be done next. Well, for certain. And it makes it easier. So when you do have those snippets of time, instead of trying to remember the nine to 12 open loops that you have, it's right there and you can then prioritize, hey, I've got this much time. I can bust these three things out because I see exactly where they are instead of trying to remember and constantly figure out where those things are. So it's a quick, actionable place for you to go. I love that idea. I've I've used Basecamp. Um, I use it with you. I you use it with another company. I think it's fantastic. And like you said, there's lots of different ones. There's Trello. There's Basecamp. There's uh, there's just there's a lot of different ones. Just search them. But I agree, Basecamp has been the most effective and easiest one in my opinion as well to use. Yeah, so I mean, you guys might think, well, you know, we're we're a dental office. I am a, a dental office manager. Like that, that is that is something that you know CEOs or people with 150 employees use. That's not true. I think that anybody that has several projects that need to get done and need to be prioritized and need to be kept track of needs some sort of help. Needs some sort of practice management software. And just having you know Google Docs or just having um, a sticky shared notes file, like or just, Word, you know, a thousand post-it notes, notes everywhere. Or, <laughs> yeah. Or, or Word docs that you just email back and forth. It is so helpful to have one home run place that you can just take a glance at all of the open loops that need to be closed. I love that, Mark. That's such a great, great idea. Um, and I'm going to piggyback on that because there's another idea that you've used with a lot of your dentists that you coach. I've used it personally. I think it's great is the time journaling exercise, but I've taken a little bit of a spin on it um, because for me, time journaling was a little tricky. I felt like <laughs> I tried to make myself way cooler than I was knowing I was doing this time journaling. So I was super, super, super productive <laughs> for those three days. Um, yeah instead of being like my true self. So for me, what I've done and a couple other office managers and um, dental assistants and hygienists have tried this that I've found works well is um, you kind of just brain dump, like just snag a piece of paper and brain dump every single thing that you're, that you do, that you um, fill your days with, like literally just brain dump on a piece of paper or um, Excel is also a great easy way to do this. And then from there, go through and this is where you have to be real honest with yourself. Look at every single thing you're doing in there and only highlight the the things that like for me, only things that Kira can do. Kira going to Costco, I'm not the only person that can go to Costco. There are several other people that can go to Costco, <laughs> even though I really like the samples. Um, you know, I'm not the only person that can go to Costco. <laughs> Truth, confession, why I go to Costco. <laughs> I just want to try the samples. Yep. Um, but the reality is I I had Costco on my list as an office manager. Um, I would put on there like going to the post office, buying stamps. Um, I, as a dental assistant, I would put on there like just silly things like stocking the prize box or I don't know, all these different things. But look and see like where you're fluttering and filling your life with excess. Because if you go through and you're real critical of like, these are the only things that I can do, you're going to see a massive list of things that other people could do or where you're filling your life with busyness instead of getting those projects done. This is a great way to declutter real quickly, clean the cobwebs, because then what I do with that list is after I've gone through and said, these are only the things that Kira can do, I then look at the rest of the list. This is primarily for office managers, dentists, um, treatment, you can do it in any position really, lead hygienist, lead dental assistants. Um, but then you look through the rest of that list, the rest of the unmarked items, and you put the rest of your team or the people that are that are in your department 
And let's see that list, how we could delegate it to each person and simplify each person's list so we're not getting into that busyness rut. Like on mine, it will have like emails. Emails are my all day. Like, why don't I just do one hour at the beginning or end of my day where I know I could get those done way faster than trying to piddle through them all day long. So there's a lot of efficiency ways that way as well. When you just brain dump it out, see what you truly are, the things you really only need to prioritize. And then the rest of the things, figure out how you can delegate. It becomes a real freeing way. But then just know when you free your time up, don't just sit there idly at that point. Go to like Mark said, the base camp, the different areas where you know you have those open loops and check some of those open loops off. Have them put into your schedule. I believe block scheduling as well. Having it set that you know this day you're doing it is also a great way to get get those things off your to-do list onto your done list. Yeah, I love that. I love, you know, the, the whole idea of taking the, the idea of the time journaling exercise. And what, what we do is we, we just basically write down for our clients. They write down what they do from the time they wake up until the time they go to sleep at night. And then they, they are able to prioritize. They're able to see the stuff that could be delegated out to somebody else. And you and I just kind of did this with our awesome regional manager here in my Arizona practices. It's like he is so good at doing uh, so many things and she's the mother hen of our organization and, and she's a nurturer, but she, she sometimes gets sucked up into low value activities, things that we know that she could delegate out to the office, uh, office managers. And she means uh, the best. She has the best intentions in her heart. She's just trying to help everybody out, but it's like, okay, for the betterment of your, your own sanity and for the organization, these certain things, these five, eight, ten things that you're doing and making your life more difficult and less efficient can be eliminated and delegated out. And that's, that's just the cleanest way to do it. It's better for the organization. It's better for that particular person that's sitting in that position. And uh, that is, that, that just it gives clarity and efficiency, uh, you know, uh, and you get so much more done. Oh, you my so gosh. much more done and it's better for everyone. Seriously. And I love that when we talked to your regional, she really did have the best of intentions. But when we talked to her, the answer that she came up with was because I felt the same way. Like this was literally what I used to think as an office manager, as a regional, I didn't quote unquote have a seat that I was expected to be in. So if I wasn't there that day, it wasn't like the check-in was not happening or the checkout wasn't happening or all these other pieces. Like as a dental assistant, I had to be there. And if I wasn't there, I would, you would drastically see that I wasn't there. And so I felt like I could pick up all the additional little pieces and that's where I was the most helpful. But in doing so, I filled my life with all these extra little pieces that really didn't move the needle forward because I didn't have a seat that I was sitting in, that I was committed to, that I was accountable to. I thought the best use of my time was making everybody's else everybody else's lives easier and picking up all these little pieces. That is a very scary trap for office managers, regional managers, leads of departments to get caught into um, because we think that that's a prime lesson in leadership that we should be leading and serving with our teams, which is very true. Don't take it the opposite way, but also check yourself. Are you doing all these things and filling all your valuable, precious time with tasks that somebody else could do? So you have the time to do Maybe those not so fun, but very important tasks that need to get done and the bigger projects, like you said. So, so many tangible nuggets today, Mark. I just, I mean, I'm soaking all this up. I hope you're having that like awesome walk on the beach while we talk about this, just getting lit on fire like I am. Oh, totally, totally. It is sunrise over the Sea of Cortez, the Pacific Ocean. And uh, I am literally walking in the soft sand as we're talking about dentistry and practice management, which is my favorite topic in the world. <laughs> How can it get any better than this? I don't, I don't think it can. Like that it's just sounds awesome. like a thank perfect you. day for, for me. Spending, uh, yeah, thank you for spending this, uh, this quiet time with me. I think we got some, some stuff done today. I think so too. So let's just do a quick recap for our listeners. So as we talked about um, becoming a master of your time, looking at the urgent versus the important and getting your to-do list to a done list with um, topics like um, either doing the, take the three topics, the three projects, you know, and and being accountable to yourself and sticking those in your schedule and owning the fact that you will do that and prioritizing that instead of letting the other things filter in. 
the another option was to utilize a, uh, an app like Basecamp or Trello to organize all those open loops, like Mark had said, um, so you can quickly at a glance see all your projects. And then the last one was to do a time journaling exercise of whatever sort, so you can see the things that actually are are truly your tasks that need to get done versus the ones that you're you're allowing time to be the master over you instead of the other way around. So I think, Mark, we gave our we gave our listeners a solid, solid episode today. And I really appreciate you being here today, Mark. Yes, thank you, Kara. It's it's been my pleasure. I'm gonna get on with my run here and uh thank you to to the Dentalpreneur and or Dental A team audience for listening to uh, us talk today. Have a great day, Kara. Thank you, you too. Thanks everyone for listening and we'll catch you next time. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental A team podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time. 